Friday, everyone. Josh Silver with Pulsed Energy here in Los Angeles. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, listen, I got a lot of requests here on Instagram and on Facebook for some more PEMF stories. So uh, I'm here today to tell you a really cool story about how we first introduced PEMF therapy to Shaq, to Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, this is one of my favorite experiences in my entire life. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be there uh, uh, and watch as this whole thing unfolded and be an instrumental part. And it uh, really shaped my life and influenced me going forward in terms of me being involved in, in PEMF. So let me get right to the story. So uh, the Lakers, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers basketball team, that's, that's who Shaq was playing for at the time. And uh, this was in 2003-2004 NBA season. So when we first met him, uh, it was the beginning of uh, 2004. They had just defeated the Houston Rockets uh, in the first round in the NBA playoffs, and they had a couple days off. And uh, at the time, I worked for the gentleman that brought high-powered PEMF over from Europe uh, and first introduced it to the United States. And he had a big 10,000-square-foot facility uh, on Ventura Boulevard here in Los Angeles. And uh, one day... Uh, a, a very famous guy by the name of Dick Gregory, who has since passed away. He was a, a, a political comedian, uh, an influencer before there really was influencers, um, and a really a, a man that uh, was wise beyond his years and uh, a really cool guy nonetheless, hysterically funny. He was coming in for uh, uh, pre-hernia surgery treatments. He was getting his leg treated. And one day he came in uh, with this younger younger woman, uh, that I thought maybe was his daughter, and I was the operator in the clinic, so I went to go put her on the machine, and it turns out, as I'm talking to her, I look at her more and more, and it dawns on me who she is, that it's Shaquille O'Neal's wife. So I turned to her, and I said, hey, you know who would really like this machine? And she sort of looks up from her treatment, and she says, my husband? I'm like, yes, I think he would love it. And she's like, you know what, you're right, can you guys come by the house tonight? And uh, my jaw hit the floor, because immediately within five minutes of, of talking to her, she's already inviting us to her house so we can treat Shaq. So without missing a beat, I said, yeah, sure, no problem. I'll, I'll confirm with the owner of the business what time do you want us there. And so we set a time and I talked to the owner, Chuck, who uh, was an American, but he was born and raised in Beirut, Lebanon. His father worked for the military. And so he uh, traveled a lot in Europe and he didn't grow up on sports uh, culturally the way that we did. So he didn't think it was, it was that big of a deal once I started explaining who Shaq was. He was more excited to have Dick Gregory, who was uh, one of the legends when he was growing up, uh, uh, there. So we show up at Shaq's house uh, that night, and I mean, I'm telling you, I was so nervous that I must have uh, sweated through my, my Mervyn suit three or four times before we finally got up through the hills and, and, and got through security and, and all that and got to Shaq's house. So we finally go there and get to Shaq's house, and we walk in the room, and there's there's Shaq and his father-in-law, Mr. Nelson, and a couple of his business associates, and his wife, Shawnee, and a couple of their little kids. And there's me, and there's Chuck, and there's this huge machine. And I have this, I'm sure, childlike silly grin on my face because we're at Shaq's house. And uh, funny initial story, the original version of the PEMF machines were about 275, 80 pounds, and Shaq had these very steep steps to go up into his house. I couldn't get the machine in. We couldn't get the machine in, so before we even met him, they had to call him down so he could come and, and help us bring the machine into his house. So that was the initial introduction. So we get in there, and, and uh, my, my, my boss at the time, my mentor, uh, Chuck, starts explaining the machine to everybody. And as he's explaining it, Mr. Nelson, uh, Shawnee's father, and uh, Shawnee and uh, uh, Dick Gregory are all sort of acknowledging the points that, that Chuck is, is giving about the machines. And Shaq's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. And Shaq's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. And he says during this whole scientific conversation, do you play basketball? I'm like, yeah, dude, I play every weekend. Like, it's been my dream to play against you. And he's like, oh yeah, is that right? I said, yeah, I actually have a bet with all my friends that uh, I think if we played a one-on-one -on -one game, we could score one basket. And he just busts up and he starts laughing. And uh, that's a true story. At the time, uh, I really thought, hey, maybe I could beat him. No, I couldn't beat him in a one-on-one -on -one game, but maybe I can, I can score a basket. And my friends didn't even think I could get a shot off. And I said, do you think I can score a basket? And without moving a facial muscle, he says, if I let you, and uh, I was on the floor. I was laughing so hard. And uh, so that was my initial uh, introduction. And so while they're all chatting about the sciences and if it's good for Shaq and what they should use it for and all that, he's like, you want to put this thing on me? And so I went over and I took the machine and I went to put it on his right shoulder because they were all talking and chatting away. So he took the loop from me as I told him what to do and he put it on his right shoulder and he brought it three quarters of the way up or so and he got this look on his face. He's like, oh my God, that's my spot. That is my spot right there. And he could not believe that it was going directly to his bad spot. 
um, it was a cool thing for me, even though I already knew that that's what he was going to experience. But for, for me to see him sort of uh, uh, sort of go head over heels about the technology immediately, it was really cool. And uh, we did it for, I think it was about five or six minutes. And the machine stopped. And I was like, okay, now test it out. And he sort of had this leather chair and ottoman that he had been laying in. So he puts his feet down. And he's like, and I'm going to censor the words he used. What the, fu- what, what the front? No way. No effing way. No way. And he could not believe the level of pain uh, had dropped significantly to that extent. And his range of motion had increased. And he was, Shaq was shocked. And he had this, he gets his famous one cheek smile that you see in all the commercials. And he got the idea of love his head. He's like, I like you. And I was like, I like you too. And it was a, it was a really cool experience because within five minutes of treating uh, a legend, now Hall of Famer in NBA history, and really in world history because he's a, a humanitarian, for him to immediately get what the machine was going to do for him and how it was going to work and help him uh, and extend what he was doing, it was, it was cool for me to experience and it was cool for him to experience. So instead of it being a one-hour meeting, we ended up spending the next nine hours at his house. We did not leave his house until 11 o'clock that night. And by the end of the night, it was just me, him, and Chuck. And we had really gotten to know each other and talked about all these crazy things in life. But there's one other story that I wanted to share with you guys. Is uh, uh, We were looking at the different books and things that he had. We were in his his library most of the time. And uh, he had a book on 9-11. And he asked candidly if we knew about this and i said what do you mean if we knew about this he's like you know the stuff that that people don't know and i said what like the conspiracy stuff he said yeah and he proceeds to tell us a story that three or four days before the events of 9 11 happened he got a phone call a warning phone call um and i'm not going to say on the video who gave him the phone call let's just say a, a group or organization that potentially could have been aware of what was going to happen and said, on or around September 11th, don't fly anywhere. Don't let your friends or your family use any airports. And uh, it blew me away. It blew me away, especially at that age. Uh, for me, when I was a lot younger, uh, you know, potentially more naive, um, he, he told the story in, in pretty good detail, too. And uh, as you'll hear in the other videos, I've gotten to know him pretty well over the years. And I've, I've gotten some great stories out of him and, and being with him. And he... he strikes me as lots of things but he definitely doesn't strike me as a liar uh it's not not a situation where i I think that he's making up the story and so i sort of i've always held that story close to my heart uh and i wanted to get a chance to share this with you so those are my initial stories on the first day of meeting shack uh if you tune into the next one i will continue where we left off and tell you more about uh, what it was like for him to use the machine the first time and uh, the amazing experience we had that season uh, getting to travel with the Lakers and Shaq. Essentially, I became his personal treatment concierge and went around city to city with the machine and was in a hotel room next to him and, and treated him on the machine whenever he needed to. So stay tuned. We'll uh, have that in the next episode for you. Be well, be safe.